Good evening. Although I have told this story before on video, I have never told it on Halloween. It concerns the time that I worked as a PA, yes, a production assistant, on that fine work of cinematic art, Amityville 3D. The year was 1983. The place was the outskirts of Mexico City, in a studio. The script of that fine work of cinematic art involved a family that unwittingly purchased and moved into the famed, nay, notorious Amityville House, which, according to the script, was built on an Indian burial ground. Never a good idea. And therefore, the house was cursed. There are certain resonances in that project that can't be accounted for through the normal channels of human reason. Most significantly, I will mention the plight of the character Cliff something or other, a realtor who was showing the family around the house. At some point he went up into the attic, never a good idea in a film of this type, or a story, or a script. The script called for that character, alone in the attic, to be swarmed by house flies, because the house was possessed, because it was built on an Indian burial ground. What we did, the prop people had had boxes of house flies shipped in from Texas, in little boxes with red targets on them from a lab. They were sent to Mexico City in a chilled state to preserve them and keep them alive. When they arrived, they were so chilled that they failed to perform as we had hoped. So they had to be thawed out with hair dryers. Still, they were a little sluggish. The script called for these flies to be swarming into the character Cliff Clifford, the realtor's mouth. Out of consideration for the hapless actor, John Harkins, who played Clifford, the crew put wire mesh into his mouth so that the flies that were insinuated toward his mouth would not suffocate him in real life uh, the way the character in the script was called for to be suffocated. Very considerate. Because the flies were still groggy from their trip from Texas, despite the warming up, ultimately the crew resorted to wafting handfuls of flies mouthward into John Harkins's mouth. And uh, therefore his mouth was filled with groggy flies. And the black wire mesh kept them from going down his gullet and actually killing him. Even so, and as game as he was, a real trooper, this actor, uh, there was a look on his eyes of real panic and suffering. But the show must go on. And so we got the takes that we needed. Afterward, my friend and fellow crew member, Juan Arturo Brennan, second AD, I'm not that fine work of cinematic art. And I sat outside the studio, laughing about the plight of poor John Harkins, laughing, I would say, at his expense. I think I was the one who came up with the idea that this could have been the scene made into an opera, which I would have called Mosca, or The Fly. Mosca being Spanish for fly. So, in an odd sense, there was some kind of a curse 
that actually happened in real life, at least for poor John Harkins, having to take on that acting task. It does bring to mind the classic saying, what and give up show business. One more thing before we go. I'll mention that also in that fine work of cinematic art, one of the actresses who played one of the children of the unfortunate family that purchased the ill-fated house was Lori Laughlin, who many years later would be caught up and do actual, albeit softcore, prison time for participating, apparently, in the college admission scandal. Coincidence? You decide. Stay safe.